Hi, this is Guillermo Campitelli and in this video I'm going to explain the difference between probability mass and probability density using the drone delivery metaphor. Okay, so when we use variables with discrete values um, we can assign a probability to each of those values and technically that is the probability mass of that value uh, so when we use probability mass typically we don't say mass we just say probability and um, that's what we've been doing so far so this in this case we've got a city with 10 regions and very clearly defined regions and the name of each region is a number uh, here that goes from 0 to 9 and the probability mass is um, the proportion of people in that region in that region um, so um, in region 0 here the proportion is 0 0.075 so that's the probability so in our metaphor, th what's the probability that if a drone will land in the first drone landing will be in this area is 0 0.075. What's the probability that the land will the drone will land in the uh, region number two is 0 0.3, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so that's probability mass. Probability density is used when we uh, consider continuous variables so variables with continuous values and because the number of values in continuous variables is in, in infinite um, we cannot assign a probability to each value so technically the probability mass for each specific value is zero but what we can do is to assign a probability mass to an interval so for example in this city um, the the whole population is located between kilometer 0 and kilometer 20 let me explain a bit about this city in previous cities we the, the regions were clearly identified but in this city there is no re region so this city is not classified in, in, uh, in regions but arbitrarily one part of the city was considered kilometer zero and it's this an imaginary line that uh, that uh, transverse the city and uh, areas to the right are are consider positive areas to the left to the left consider negative or east positive west negative and basically what we know is how far is each area um, so each point of the city how far is from kilometer zero and if it is to the east that would be positive and if it is to the east uh, to the west it would be negative um, so we cannot uh, determine what's the probability mass that the land will land in kilometer 10 for example but we can um, what we can do is to consider a very very tiny interval that contains the value of interest let's say 10 so we construct a very tiny interval for example the interval that goes from 9.99999 to 10.00001 so it's very tiny interval and but we can determine what's the probability mass of that interval yeah so that would be very close to say what's the probability mass of the value 10 now there is a compl another complication here is that here we need to use calculus so we have to find the limit uh, and I'm not going to explain calculus but what, what I, I want to say is that in, in, in calculus you try you try to find the the a small interval and and you find what's how many 
uh, people live in that interval, uh, or th actually the proportion of people in that interval, and you make the interval a bit smaller, and you see whether the proportion changed. And at some point, you make the interval smaller, and so the proportion doesn't change. It's the same as in the as in um, as considering a bit la larger intervals. So at that time, at that point, you stop finding tinier intervals, and that would be the probability uh, mass of that interval that that counts. So in some cases. Uh, you stop before than in others, um, depending on how the data is distributed. So, so basically, because the length of the interval would be different in, in different cases, uh, statisticians uh, found a way to deal with that problem. And that way is to report the probability density instead of the probability mass. So the probability of density of a very tiny interval. Um, okay, so let's then explain what probability density is. So probability density is simply the probability mass of an interval divided by the length of the interval. Okay, so let's consider this. This is a very, uh, a very. Uh, easy example it becomes more complicated when we deal with lower numbers but so let's say that in this city we know that the whole population is located between kilometer zero and kilometer plus 20. so the proportion of people in that interval is one because we've got one million people uh, one million divided by one million is one so that's the probability mass of the interval. The length of the interval is 20 kilometers, so 20. Uh, so probability density of the interval is 1 divided by 20, or 0 0.05. So that's the probability density of that interval. But as I said, I mean, I want to be very clear about probability density is with this uh, example. but you won't find um, probability densities for these very large um, intervals. So typically the interest of statisticians is to establish probability densities for very, very small intervals. Yes. So, and the idea of doing that is that if you've got a value that you are interested to know what's the probability uh, that something will uh, um, the pro so the probability of that value then you want an e very tiny interval that includes that value okay so and, and then calculate the density of that of that interval um, okay so I want you to to show you um, this example so in this example the graph is the same the only the thing, but the thing that changes the values here. So here, the whole population is between kilometer zero and kilometer zero point five. So it's much more concentrated. We would say it's much more dense. Uh, graphically, we don't see it. We, we, it's the same graph, but because we've got uh, um, um, the the value that we are seeing is 0 0.5 instead of 20 that means that there, are, there is much more people in a, in it uh, relative to, to the interval than in the previous case so we let's calculate the density okay probability mass is one because all the people live in that area the length of the interval is 0 0.5 now instead of 20 so the probability density is one divided by 0 0.5 and 1 divided by 0 0.5 is 2. So the probability density of this interval is 2. Now, this is very important because typically we think about probability, we, we, we saw the rules of probability and probability should add to 1. So you sum 
you do the sum of all the probabilities of the different regions and it should be 1. But probability densities are larger than 1. And that's very confusing. Well, for, for example, in this case it's 2, the probability density of, of that interval. Well, that's because probability densities do not add to 1. If you are calculating probability mass, the probability mass will add to 1, but probability densities integrate to 1. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about integration. Again, this is calculus. I'm not interested on, 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 on uh, explaining calculus. But the idea is, is uh, it is important to, to be clear that you, you can have probability densities that are larger than one, which is sometimes confusing. Because the probability density you are dividing by the length of the interval. Okay? Okay, so basically this is probability density. As I said, here we are considering an interval. The previous case, the interval was 20. Uh, is too long. We are typically not interested in that long interval. In this case it's 0 0.5, but still quite long. So typically we consider very, very small intervals. And when we consider very small intervals, the center of that interval, uh, um, we, we, so we calculate the density of that interval and it adds very close to say that um, because the interval is very tiny, we say that the density of that interval is the density of the value of that value of interest. Okay, so basically probability mass is for um, for discrete um, variables and if we add the probabilities of each value they, that adds to 1. Um, probability density is for continuous variables and probability density shouldn't add to 1, they should integrate to 1. Um, so basically there can be densities that are larger than one.